Hello everyone, I'm Nock. In this tutorial video, I will show you step by step how to create a Christmas greeting card in Adobe Illustrator. First of all, I'm creating a canvas in 2000 by 2660 pixel size. This is the regular size I use for greeting cards in 4 to 3 format. You can choose CMYK color mode if you will print after you create, but I will choose RGB for the video with 300 ppi raster quality. Let's create the canvas. I will start to place the graphics I use for the greeting card. I will use the illustration I draw in my latest video. You can also find it in video charts. But don't worry, you can go and download these graphics in the video description. Just a small update, please be sure that you don't use these graphics in commercial use. For all other rights, you can feel free to use them. You can use your graphics as well, which makes your artwork more spatial. I'm going to lock the current layer and create a new one with a name as a background. Ok, now I will select the rectangle tool and I will draw a little bit more than half of my canvas. Make sure it's filled with white and without stroke. I will duplicate the rectangle and change the color to green. But you can select your colors. I'm going to arrange its size and position on the canvas. Now I'm going to create a new rectangle, the same in canvas, 2000 by 2660 pixel size. And make sure that without color field inside. And I'm choosing the red color for the stroke, with 30 point stroke thickness. I will arrange the position of the frame around my canvas. I'm going to select the offset path, make sure the preview is active, and offset the frame in minus 50 pixels. I'm going to delete the other frame. Now I will create another rectangle between the frame edges. Size is not important, just consider that I will use this part as a ribbon. I will change the fill color to the same color as the frame. And remove the color of the stroke. Ok, now I can select the frame and expand it in the object menu. The frame will turn to an object shape. Now it's possible to select both and merge them. I'm going to select the shape again, Ctrl C and Ctrl F for copy and change the color to black. I will use this part as a drop shadow. Arrange the position and send the shape backward. In the effect menu, I will add Gaussian blur in 20 pixels. The last point is, change the opacity to 40%. Now I will make a texture for the ribbon. I'm going to use the pattern here, so don't forget to move the pattern graphic into the correct layer. I will arrange the position of my design, duplicate it for the top part and arrange the position again. When it looks fine, I will move them to an empty area, then I will use the rectangle tool to create a copy of the ribbon. I'm going to move that part on top of the pattern. Before going to the next step, select both pattern shapes and make a group. Then select together with rectangle part and make clipping mask in the properties menu. This graphic is ready to use on top of the ribbon. After you place it, you can still edit the position of the pattern by double clicking on it. You can use the pattern in this style, but I will change the opacity mode to screen. Ok, now I will use my illustration, but before I move it, I'm going to change the current layer to the layer where our design stands, and I will place it in the middle of the edges of the background parts. Rescale it a little bit, and move the graphics beneath the ribbon. Now let's create a pattern together guys. I will move my canvas to the left side a little bit. Ok, I will select the rectangle tool and I will draw a long, thin rectangular shape. Without struck color and let's fill it with white color. Let's make the size more precise, 60 pixels width and 2500 pixels height. 
Now I'm going to right click and select. Transform and move. Ok, now what we will do in this window is, we will move the rectangle to the right side only. So that vertical move must be 0. And the horizontal move must be 120 pixels because of the 2 times of the width. Ok, make sure the preview is selected, then copy. Ok, now I will do the same action by pressing Ctrl D in several times. Now select everything and Ctrl C and Ctrl F because we will copy and paste the same graphics on top of it. Then I will turn it to 90 degrees. Selecting everything and changing the opacity to 30%. And again, select everything and make them a group. I will use this pattern in a cross direction. So I'm going to turn the graphics in 45 degrees. Now I'm turning back to my canvas and I will arrange the position of the pattern we created. Select the green part and copy on top of it. And make sure the rectangle is on the top layer. Then select both the rectangle and pattern and make a clipping mask in the object menu. You will see the mask is not in the correct order. So I will move it back until it is placed correctly. I decided to decrease pattern opacity a little bit more, but it's up to you. Let's move on to the next step. I'm going to lock the current layer and I will create a new one. Selecting the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a small rectangle. Size is 600 pixels to 250. I will choose red color for this shape and no stroke color. Ok, now I will select the pen tool and I will draw a triangle on the left side of the shape. While both two parts are selected, I'm going to click Merge in Pathfinder. With the ellipse tool, I will draw a small circle. Let's change color to understand easily. Select both shapes together and click minus front in the Pathfinder menu. Ok, now I will create another rectangle on top of the shape in white color. Size is not important, this will be our label. With the text tool, find a natural font style and make the more stylish label. Then I will create a shadow effect by copying the base shape in black color. Give it a Gaussian blur effect and send it backward of all. I will apply the same pattern also in this label. So I am going to copy the pattern and place it on top of it. Select the main shape and copy it to the front, then make a clipping mask. After I will select everything and Ctrl G to make them a group, then I can place it on my design. Ok, we are in the last step of our design. Now I will create an ellipse on top of the greeting card. I will fill this shape with white color. And I will select the offset pad and I will enter minus 30 pixels in the offset window. In the new shape, I am going to remove the fill color and I will give a red color for the stroke. Don't forget the increased stroke thickness to 10 points. Then I change the stroke type to the dashed line.
Again, I will add shadow effect with the same process I made before beneath the ellipse shape. I'm going to use text tool for my Christmas message. I decided to write one word in a natural handwriting font and other word in the script. I will also increase the Christmas word size much more than other word. I'm going to expand this text in the object menu then ungroup them to arrange positions. You can decide to change the size and position of your design until you like. More or less we are done, but I will show you one last touch that makes your illustration one level up. I have a paper texture in my library, but you can find free texture on the internet or simply you can take a photo of a blank paper all works fine. I'm going to arrange the size and position on top of my design. I will move that texture inside of another layer. And when it's selected, I will change the opacity mode as multiply. Then decrease the opacity a little bit. Your greeting cards will look in paper texture. This step is not necessary, and if you will print it, don't do that. But for an image you will export then use in internet, it will be perfect. Alright guys, that was everything for this video. I hope you liked this tutorial, and please make sure you subscribe to my channel. And you can like the video, if I can help you to learn, makes me also happy. Have a nice day. See you in the next video.